Good morning, everyone. Tom Gerges, all the way from the great state of North Carolina. I am back. I'm so blessed to be with you guys. Um, I love bringing the word, and I'm so grateful to Pastor Mark and Carmen for this opportunity. I just, uh, I thank you guys so much. I love you guys. Uh, Daniel, we're always praying for you. Uh, and all, actually all of you, um, that are hurting in some way, or we are constantly uh, praying God's very best, His hand to be very to be on you, and, and his, for His very best. Um, you know, I got a word uh, that uh, was a—it's a precious subject to me, um, and it was—I entitled this one "The Precious Blood of Jesus Christ," and uh, it. It's a bit of a hard-hitting one this time, so um, I just want to let you guys know up front, you know, um, that G Jesus' blood is not to be trifled with. Let's just say it that way. So we're going to talk about the precious blood of Jesus, uh, the blood that was shed for all of us, um, for us to find forgiveness of sin. Um, we, in my estimation, we must come in contact with the blood of Jesus Christ, the precious blood of Jesus. It must become real to us what he did, the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf. So let's dive into it if we can. Uh, jump into Hebrews, and I'm using the Amplified. I like that Bible, and I'm using it this time. So Hebrews 9 and verse 22, and we're going to go through 25. So Hebrews 9, 22 through 25, and it says this. In fact, starts off with an in fact. In fact, under the law, almost everything is cleansed with blood. Okay? And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness, neither release from sin and its guilt, nor cancellation of the merited punishment. Therefore, it was necessary for the earthly copies of the heavenly things to be cleansed with these. He's talking about the temple. But the heavenly things themselves require far better sacrifices than these. For Christ did not enter into a holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself. Now to appear in the very presence of God on our behalf. And nor did he enter into the heavenly sanctuary to offer himself again and again and again, as the high priests enter the holy place every year with blood that is not their own. So, Jesus made this sacrifice once, once and for all, one time. He didn't do it over and over and over again like the high priests have to do with the animals. He did it once. And here's what we know. There has to be blood shed for the remission of sin. Hebrews stated that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness, uh, neither release from sin and its guilt, nor cancellation of the merited punishment. Okay, So without, without the blood, there is no remission of sin and its guilt. And did you catch that, church? That that jumped out at me like, uh, I don't know, it was it leaped off the page. The guilt is released too. It's also gone. The blood of Jesus is so strong. It not only washes away your sin, it takes away your guilt. Let it be gone. It washes away the punishment that was due for our sin. It's all gone, guys. The sin, the guilt, the punishment that we deserve, all gone because God washed it away. The blood of Jesus, the precious blood of Jesus washes it away. Psalm 103, uh, 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. That's, a, that's just unbelievable. God said 
He washes our transgressions away as far as the east is from the west. Well, you realize, you know, the north and the south will always find a way back to each other. I, I thought this was kind of cool. If you travel north, you eventually will hit the North Pole and begin the process of going back south again. Okay? And if you go, you know, south, and eventually you'll hit the South Pole and start your venture back north again. God said he'll remember our, your sins as far as the east is from the west. Well, they never touch each other. You start off east and you just keep going east. If you go west, there's no touching each other, themselves. They will never touch each other. And God said it for a reason. Your sins are forgiven. That's what the blood of Jesus... This is not just a simple thing. Your sin is forgiven you. They're gone. They are remembered no more. So don't allow the enemy to come in and club you on the head uh, and tell you how bad a person you are or you have been. Remember, your guilt is gone too. You're washed in the blood of Christ. Okay? And he did it once. It has made you a new creature. Jesus gave this gift to us freely. You see, without the blood, let's talk about that for a second. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, Christianity is a is it's a powerless fraud. It is. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, the church is a religious fraternity <laughs> with people living in deception of it. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, our preaching is in vain. Our worship is a farce. It doesn't make any sense. We have ritual without righteousness and ceremony without conversion. Without the blood of Jesus Christ, the church is nothing. It has nothing to offer if it doesn't offer salvation of your soul, of your soul, of our souls. One small drop of the precious blood of Jesus Christ changes us, changes our souls. It changes men and women who hate into people who love. Have you, have you seen this conversion? It changes the hardest hearts, okay, to one to, to hearts that spread the gospel message everywhere they go. Just ask Paul the apostle what the precious blood of Jesus meant to him. He hunted and imprisoned and killed Christians for their beliefs. And he was changed in an instant, in a moment, as they say in a twinkling of an eye. He was changed, completely changed. Ask any of the disciples what the blood means to them. They were willing to die for it. It completely changed their lives, church. Every one of them was martyred for their steadfast belief in Jesus Christ. Would you go, would you be put to death with spears and have your head cut off and or be quartered or hung upside down on a tree and, uh, you know, crucified, would you allow that to happen if it was all a lie? No, of course not. You give that up so fast. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ meant to the disciples. They were willing to be martyred for it. You know, the message of the cross is confrontational. Our nation is at a crossroad. We really are. We have lost our moral compass. And it's time we became a little more confrontational. You know, we see evil being pushed on our children by companies that we trusted for generations. Disney comes to mind. I don't know what they're thinking, but even their top brass at Disney is trying to push a narrative into the heads of our kids and put it into every one of their movies. It can't happen. We, we see the indoctrination of our kids by our, our higher education institutions. I'm talking to you, colleges. They used to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. 
Almost all of these colleges did. They had a background with teaching biblical truths. And now they openly teach against the Bible and what it stands for. Our youth believe we've given them biblical stories. You know, it's so they leave the church. That's what happens. They, they think what we're giving them is a lie. I'll give you an example, too. I was really distressed the other day. I, I look online for things, and there was uh, at Duke University. They have, a, they have what's called Duke Divinity. Uh, it's a school that's there. And at Duke Divinity, students are pressured, I read this, to interpret religion and society through a critical or queer lens. That's it. That's what it says. Duke Divinity, I just watched this recently held a worship service where they invited the students to praise the great queer one. That was what the intro was. Look it up. Check it out. We see our political leaders openly defy God and kick him out of everything. They kick him out of all of our public institutions. I remember when um, Kim worked in downtown King County Courthouse. She was simply not allowed to share her faith, really in any, in any way. She could get written up or probably even worse. Uh, she gave, I remember she gave a, a little placard, it was about this big, to a coworker, and it had a, a scripture verse on it. And they told the coworker she had to take that off her desk because it would incite people. It would trigger or offend people. A, a tiny scripture verse on her private desk had to be removed. But on a weekly basis, Kim was allowed to receive emails from the county promoting every ungodly cause that they believed in. Every single kind. It didn't matter. And you were not allowed to speak up about that. Guys, evil is on the march. We see it. Evil is destroying our nation. And for us to see evil and not call evil evil itself... That's wrong. We need to call out what we see. Let God arise once again in this nation and smash the enemy with his powerful right hand. You know, the word of, of Jesus Christ, it terrifies the devil. <laughs> it's Satan's greatest fear. The secret, though, is the blood of Christ. His blood guarantees our salvation. It makes the word of God powerful. It sets the captives free. It conquers death, hell, and the grave. It's the, it's the blood that breaks generational curses in our families. His blood sets you free from sin. You will never have to be a slave to this world again. You're in the family of God, and that is good news. One drop of the, of the precious blood of Jesus Christ changes everything when it's applied to your life. God made it so that a river of blood from goats or bulls could never save mankind. It was only going to be the blood of his one and only son, Jesus, the Lamb of God, that was going to save you. The blood of doves can't save you. There's only one ultimate offering that brings salvation, and that's what Jesus did on the cross. That's why this is so important. Humanitarian acts can't, you know, the, of kindness can't save you. Philanthropy cannot save you. Doing good deeds are never going to be enough to save a soul. You know, jump over, if you would, for me, to Galatians 3. Take a look at this scripture. And we're going to get into kind of a hard part here a little bit. Galatians 3, so forewarning. Galatians 3, 13, it says, Christ purchased our freedom. That's what it says in the Bible, right there. Christ 
purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law and its condemnation by becoming a curse for us. It, for it's written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Did you hear that, guys? Christ purchased our freedom and redeemed us from the curse of the law with his blood. And he did it freely for you. That's what the spilled blood of Jesus Christ did. It was freely done for this dark world so that all who believe would find salvation and they would find their hope. Our hope is Jesus. He is the Lamb of God. You know, one of the most beloved scripture verses is John 3.16. Absolutely love this one. Um, I think everybody can recite this one. Even non-Christians can probably recite this one. They, they've seen it at sporting events and everywhere. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Man, that, that it, it's such a wonderful verse, right? I mean, it's it's... It's a wonderful scripture. It's full of hope. It's, it's, got, it's full of good news. There's just one little exception. It's a small word that's added to that verse. And the word is perish. Perish means to suffer death, typically in a violent, sudden, or untimely way. To suffer complete destruction. That's what perish means. And it's used in that scripture verse. You see, God so loved the world and everyone in it that whoever believes would not perish. They would not suffer death in a typically violent, sudden, or untimely way. They would instead have eternal life. They would not perish. But the world, this world that we live in right now, teaches our friends and our family not to believe in God. He's a fairy tale. But put your faith in whatever the current cause is of the day. There's many of them. I mean, it doesn't take much to see what the, the, the cause du jour is of the day. This world's arrogance is to think they know better than God. Now the word perish is in that scripture for them. For those who kick God out of every aspect of our lives, the word perish is in that scripture for them. For those who think killing unborn babies and the sanctity of marriage between a man and woman is irrelevant, and all of that, the arrogance, the arrogance of unbelievers. It's almost like they're trying to make a new religion. The arrogance of unbelievers is uncanny. And I want to ask them, I just want to ask them, are you sure? Are you sure there is no God? Are you so sure God won't punish people for sin? Are you so sure? Are you so sure you know his word? Because if you're not sure, and you continue in this faithless babble about God, the word perish was put in that scripture verse for you. But let me tell you, about a different word. It's the word tetelestai. I know, I know, I said that myself. What? <laughs> T-E-T-E-L-E-S-T-A-I, tetelestai. I was listening to a pastor preach on this word and it just rocked me. I, I said it was the greatest. Uh, the, the, it, the first of all, it's, it's a Greek word. The Greek word for it is finished. Remember who spoke that word with his 
while he gave up the precious blood. Jesus did that for us. And he said, tetelestai. Tetelestai. By the way, the Greek word, tetelestai, for it is finished, uh, was a word that was also used in business, which meant your debt is fully paid. It was also used that way. It was also used uh, in judgment in court, the court systems back in the time, which meant your sentence is fully served. And then it was also used as a military term, I found out, uh, the term tetelestai, which meant the battle has been fully won. Isn't that great? So when Jesus said, it is finished, he meant three things. Your debt of sin is fully paid. The sentence for punishment and judgment for us, for what we deserve, <laughs> has been fully served. And the battle against the devil and sin and all the enemies, sickness, disease, and viruses has been fully won. Rest in the finished work of the cross, guys. It is finished. Tetelestai. It's awesome. Your debt is fully paid, the sentence is fully served, and the battle is fully won, and you get the victory. You, and Jesus does all the fighting, we get the victory. Jesus did all the work, and all we have to do is believe. The work of the cross has paid our debt. The battle has already been won. The sentence for our sins has been paid. The only thing we need to do is say yes. To accept this, just say yes. Jesus is the only way to God. He did the work. Every other major religion out there requires you to work for your salvation. And let me just interject real quick. You will never live up to that. That's not going to happen. You will never live up to being able to work enough to cover up your sin. Jesus was the sinless Lamb of God who became a curse on our behalf so that all who believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. And look, if you don't believe, God's not going to force you into heaven, okay? God will give you the desire of your heart. If you choose to live a life of sin and rebellion, God is, there, there, no one is stopping you, okay? That's why there is so much evil in the world, though. So let's not be shocked about that. When we choose these lifestyles, just Understand that position very well, though. You are rejecting the precious spilled blood of Jesus Christ. You're rejecting it. He didn't do this so that you'd have to live in this terrible religious system of laws and rigid ideology. No, 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 no. He did it to set you free. The people who don't know God's word and never open the Bible and don't, they just don't know how freeing a life in Christ Jesus truly is. It's, it's exactly the opposite of what people think. They think they know so much, but they don't. Your debt is fully paid. Your punishment is fully served. And the battle is fully won. That's what the precious blood of Jesus did for us. God so loved the world, all of us. The eternal life, by the way, starts now, here on this earth. We have been talking about, you know, living in heaven, living that heavenly life right now. That eternal life starts now, here on earth. Jesus wants you to live your best life. So stop living a life that's based on your own morals, then. That's, where has that ever led you? Seriously. Give God a chance to lead your life, and you will see that a, a truly um, 
hope-filled and mission-filled life is the best life to live. It is. The pursuit, listen to this church, the pursuit of putting others first and caring for your neighbors is living an eternal existence here on earth. I wrote that. The pursuit of putting others first and caring for your neighbors is living an eternal existence here on earth. It's true. It feels so much better to give, to love, to express love to others. And if you've never experienced a life with Jesus, you can. A mission-filled life with the one who promised us eternal life is available. You can have it. You know, it didn't, by the way, it didn't take Paul a ton of classes or a seminary degree. He was changed in a moment, in an instant. His sin tossed as far as the east is from the west. And there's nothing you can do to earn God's love. That's not going to happen. This concept, by the way, has become very, very real to me because of my little granddaughter, Cece. Man, I love that little thing. She is. There's absolutely nothing she can do to earn my love. It, she just has it. She just has it. I heard a pastor put that this uh, this concept this way, and it was exactly on point. So he said, if everything that needed to be done was done on the cross of Jesus, there's nothing for you to do to earn Christ's love, God's love, and there's nothing you can do to unearn God's love because you didn't earn it. That's just a mind-blowing concept, right? And, and what it means is that if you are in Jesus Christ's love, God, God's love, for you, it's, it's, not the, it's not the finish line. It's the starting line of his love. You don't work for God's love. You work from God's love. That was just such a telling thing. I think the closest we ever get to this concept is having a child. I mean, how many of us are parents out there with a kid, right? And the first time you hold your kid, you just love them. It, and the question is, what did they do? Nothing. They didn't do anything. Well, what are the benefits that they bring? Actually, nothing. As a matter of fact, they make life a little bit harder. They keep me up all night. I'm exhausted at like 3 o'clock in the morning. I tend not to love you know people that do that to me. And every time you try to embrace them, they poop on you. So what is that about? So again, you know, when people yell at me at three in the morning and are pooping on me, my first response generally is not, oh, I love you and find you a blessing. <laughs> no. But when you hold your kid, even though they're yelling at you and they're pooping on you, you love them. You love them because the relationship is one way. They can't communicate, but you can. They don't understand, but you do. They can't give anything, so you give everything. That's how God sees us. God is a father. You are his sons and daughters. The way he feels about you is similar to a healthy parent but in a perfect, perfect way. You know, and God set it up from this. He gave us our way out, and it's through the precious blood of his son. You see, he gave his son so that all who would believe would not perish, but have eternal life. Guys, you're a moment away from that. You'll see on, on the screen here, addresses and phone numbers um, of a New Day Church. We'd love to talk with you. You've never heard this message before. God's love can become real to you. All you have to do is to say yes. You know, if, if you've tried to live life through your own moral compass, let's put that away. 
We know how far that gets us. It's time to let God work in your life. He'll change your life and I promise you it will be for the better. You just don't know how freeing a life in Christ truly is. So call us, reach out to a New Day Church and we would love to pray with you. We'll get you more information. And for those of you that have walked away from the church, we need you. The church needs you. The body of Christ needs you. So it's time to come back. Come back and live the mission-filled life that Jesus anointed you to live. It's time to get involved, church. It's time to do battle against the evil that is going on in our nation. This cannot stand. The evil is trying to drown out the Christian voice, and we can't let that happen. We've got a work to do. So let's all stand up. Let's get off the couch. Let's dust that dust our dust ourselves off. And let's get busy doing the mission. God loves you and he will walk with you. And he, he loved us enough to give his only son so that we would have eternal life. Imagine what that's going to be like. Imagine heaven. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday. Uh, this is the great state of North Carolina. I can't even believe it. We will talk again very, very soon. God bless you all.